Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Artisasa tutorial on the subdivision application. A subdivision application is initiated by a license surveyor and the license surveyor must also be registered on the Artisasa platform. To begin with, you log in to the platform. You'll then be required to enter your Artisasa user credentials, that is the identification number or the Artisasa ID, as well as the password you used when creating your account. Key in your Adisasa ID, enter your password, and then click Continue. When you click Continue, you'll be provided with a one-time password code, an OTP, to the phone number you use to register with on the platform. Once you have received the OTP, type the code onto the OTP prompt box and then click Log In. You'll then be navigated to the dashboard. It's important to note that when you first log in, the account you are logged in as is your private account. For you to perform a subdivision application, you will need to switch to your license surveyor account. So you do so by clicking on the profile icon and it will display a drop down menu with the professional account which has been approved for you as a licensed surveyor. Switch to your license surveyor account and you'll be able to proceed and initiate a subdivision application. For more information on how to upgrade to a professional account, check out our YouTube video on how to upgrade your account through the link in the video description. On your dashboard, you'll find a number of services listed under the several departments we have in the Ministry of Lands and Physical Planning. The departments include Land Registration, Land Administration, Physical Planning, Survey and Mapping, Land Valuation, and lastly, we have the National Land Commission Services. A subdivision application, which this tutorial is based on, falls under the Survey and Mapping Department. There are a number of services offered under this department which include new grants, subdivision, amalgamation, resurvey, and also sale of plans. The first four processes must be conducted by a licensed surveyor. However, the last process, which is sale of plans, can be conducted by any member of the public, irrespective of whether the individual has a private account or a professional account. Our tutorial is going to be based on a subdivision application, so you'll proceed and click on subdivision. Upon doing so, you'll be navigated to the applications page, and under the applications page, there are a number of tabs provided. We have four tabs, namely, pending, ongoing, approved, and rejected. All the subdivision processes that you will have initiated as a license surveyor will be listed among the tabs provided, depending on the levels of your applications. The pending tab is for the application that you have initiated but have not completed. It or they still need some action from your side or from the parties involved in the subdivision application. The ongoing tab features applications which you have completed, but it's up to the ministry side through the relevant officials to do their part. The approved tab is for applications which you have completed and have been validated by the relevant ministry officials. And the rejected tab is for applications that have been rejected by the ministry officials for one reason or another. For you to initiate a subdivision application as a licensed surveyor, you will click on the new application button on the top right hand corner. Upon doing so, you'll be navigated to a page with FAQs, which is the frequently asked questions related to a subdivision application. It is highly recommended that you go through all of them, and particularly the one detailing the requirements needed. To begin with, you are required to provide the approval letter reference number or avail the approval letter in PDF format with the relevant reference number. The logic behind this is centered on whether or not the approval letter was acquired through the Adisasa platform. If it was acquired through the platform, you will need to provide the approval letter reference number since the reference number will be used to pull the approval letter to this particular application. However, if the approval letter was acquired off system, you will need to enter the reference number and still attach a PDF document of the same for verification. The next requirement is the scheme plan, which should exclusively be attached in PDF format as well. You can also attach the calibration certificate, once again, in PDF format. You'll attach the raw data document as well, which details the raw data that has been acquired from the instrument used during fieldwork. Most GNSS instruments have the ability to export the raw data or the fieldwork data in CSV format, so please take note of that. However, if you used an analog fieldwork instrument, you'll be required to type in the data and then save it in either XLSX or CSV 
format. The next requirement is the computation workbook, which should be attached in either XLS or XLSX format. Please note that the coordinates therein should be in UTM projection. This is because the Adisasa platform only accepts UTM data. We also have the beacon certificate, which should be attached in PDF format. There's the survey plan document as well, which you'll attach in PDF format. You'll also provide the working diagram, which is an image representing an overview sketch of the survey process submitted with well-labeled points, line bearings, and distances. As far as the survey plan polygons are concerned, it should be noted that there are some file extensions which the shapefile or the zip file should contain so as to enable a successful submission of data on the Adisasa platform. A standard ISO shapefile should have three distinct file extensions, namely SHP, CHX, and DBF. However, on the Adisasa platform, the shapefile being uploaded should also contain the PRG file format, reason being that it's appropriate to have the projection of the work being submitted, and it must be in UTM projection. It is also key to note that the four required file extensions should be contained within the zip file which you will be submitting. Another aspect in the FAQ section which you should also consider checking out is the sample templates. This is where you are going to find the templates of the required data or documents that you will provide during this application. As you can see, we have the sheet corners and the computation sheet template as well. It is highly recommended that you download and view the computation sheet template. This is because its appearance has been subject to change based on agreements made by the relevant authorities. When you are satisfied with the information in the FAQs page, you can proceed and click on Next. You'll then be navigated to the Application Details section. This section contains three distinct subsections which will be required to key in the required information. They include the survey details, the location details, as well as the additional details. It is important to note that it is mandatory to fill in the requirements with an asterisk sign alongside them, failure to which you will not be able to successfully submit the application. On survey details, you are first required to select the projection type, and for this particular tutorial, the parcel which we will be submitting is under the UTM zone 37 South. Next up is the approval letter reference number. This is an aspect which we previously alluded to earlier on in the video. If the approval process for the subdivision was done on the Ardisasa platform, you will only need to provide the approval letter reference number, and then the number you've provided will be used to pull the approval letter to this particular application. However, if the approval process was done off-system, you will need to provide the approval letter reference number and also upload a scanned PDF document of the approval letter, as will be portrayed later on in the video. In this case, the approval process was done off-system. As such, we will input the reference number and we will also be attaching the approval letter as is required. So I'll go ahead and enter the reference number. The next step is to enter the parcel number. Kindly enter the parcel number in the format registry forward slash block, then the block number without any space in between forward slash the parcel number. Kindly note that the Adisasa platform only accepts parcel numbers keyed in using this format and thus be careful not to do the contrary. You will also be required to select the date of issuance for the approval letter. You'll then move on to the location details and you'll first select the country where the parcel is situated. In this case, it is in Nairobi County. We'll also select the sub-county where the parcel is located. In this case, it is Kasarani. And lastly, we'll enter the locality. In this case, the parcel lies within Kamulu. The final subsection is the additional details. If you feel the need to add any additional details, feel free to do so in the text box provided. If you're satisfied with the details provided, go ahead and click on Next. You'll then be navigated to the Field Notes Cover Details section. Under this section, we have two subsections, namely Field Note Details and the Reference Plans FR Numbers. To begin with, you will select the date of completion of the field survey. You will then be required to key in the FR number of the particular parcel undergoing this process, and then click on Add. Upon doing so, the parcel's FR number will be displayed alongside the text box. A key thing to note is that if the parcel number you are submitting falls within more than one FR number, you are required to add all the FR numbers which that particular parcel falls within. In this case, the parcel undergoing this process falls only within one FR number. 
It is also important to note the field labeled date of completion of instrument calibration. As you can see, it doesn't have an asterisk alongside it and is therefore not a mandatory field. This is because there is no specific database which the system can use to verify whether your instrument underwent calibration. As such, it is up to you to make sure that the instrument you used is calibrated, hence the data acquired and submitted is not erroneous. If you're satisfied with the details provided, go ahead and click on Next. The next section is the Attach File section. This is where you'll be required to attach all the cadastral files that are required in this process. Also, please note the required file formats for the documents before uploading them. As you can recall, the approval for this process was done off system. As such, having already keyed in the approval letter reference number, we will also need to attach the land administration approval letter in PDF format. However, if the approval process was done on the Earth Disaster System, then this document would not be amongst the required documents needed to be uploaded in this section. As for the calibration certificate, it is not a mandatory document to upload. Nonetheless, you can upload it if applicable. The next document to upload is the raw data document in the required format. You'll also attach the computation sheet. Subsequently, you'll attach the scheme plan in PDF format. Attach the working diagram as well in either of the required formats. You'll then attach the survey plan polygons. Next up will be the beacon certificate, which you can upload either in PDF format or in a zip file if you are uploading several of them. We'll also attach the survey plan document in PDF format. Lastly, we are going to attach the field notes in either PNG, JPG, or JPEG formats. However, there are instances where you'll need to attach several field notes. As such, you might as well zip them and upload the field notes in a zip file. So go ahead and attach the field notes in the appropriate format. If you have any additional documents which you feel will be relevant to this application, you can key in the name of the document in the text box provided. And once you start doing so, the choose file button alongside the text box will be activated and you'll also be able to upload the document at your own convenience. If you're satisfied with the documents you have submitted to facilitate this process, you can proceed and click on next. The last section is the Verify Details section with all the details that you have provided. So scroll through the entire page and go through the details you have provided. If satisfied, you can go ahead and click on Submit. You also have an option of going back if you need to edit any information. For this case, we'll proceed and click on Submit. Upon doing so, you'll be prompted to approve on whether you indeed want to submit the request and then proceed and click on Yes. You'll then get a confirmation message on a pop-up box to affirm that the application has been created successfully and then click on close. So after you've submitted your application, a new page will appear displaying the reference number as well as the status of the application. In this case, the status is pending. Once the license surveyor has submitted the application, a notification will automatically be sent to the parcel owner instructing him or her to log in to the Ardisasa system and either approve or reject the application through an OTP or a one-time password verification process. It is key to note that the license surveyor must be in communication with the parcel owner throughout the verification process for ease of operations. Once the owner has logged in, he or she will navigate the notification bell on the top right corner of the screen and check for the notification prompting him or her to verify the application. An OTP prompt box will be displayed with the Get OTP button alongside it. If the parcel owner does not approve of this process, a reject survey button will be displayed on the top right corner of the screen and he or she can then click on it and the process will be cancelled. However, if the parcel owner is aware of the process and approves of it, he or she will then click on the get OTP button and an OTP code will be sent to the phone number that he or she used during registration. Upon receiving the OTP code, the parcel owner will then navigate to the browser that he or she had logged into the AdSasa platform with. The individual will then key in the exact code received in the OTP prompt box and then click on the verify button. Upon doing so, a pop-up box will appear affirming that the OTP has been successfully verified. So he or she will go ahead and click on close. As is featured in the FAQ section, one of the requirements needed to facilitate this application to fruition is the checking fee or survey fee, which amounts to 1,000 Kenyan shillings. This is a fee that is paid to the ministry after the submission of the application. 
This payment can be made either by the parcel owner or by the license surveyor executing the process. In this case, the parcel owner will be making the payment. As such, he or she will navigate to the invoice section and then click on the pay button. The proprietor will be provided with the available methods for payment as well as the procedures to be used. Once the payment is made, the proprietor will click on the confirm button as is featured in the bottom left hand corner and then click on the OK button on the top. Upon doing so, the status of the payment will change from pending to complete. A key thing to note is that the proprietor will have the option of viewing the invoice. So upon clicking on view, two options will be displayed. There's the invoice and the receipt. The receipt option is not active until the checking fee or survey fee is paid. So if the proprietor clicks on the invoice, he or she will be provided with the invoice and in this case, the invoice status is paid. Also, the parcel owner can go back and view the receipt. In order to download the receipt, he or she is free to do so by clicking on the download button on the top right hand corner and the receipt will be downloaded to the local machine and the same applies for the invoice as well. As mentioned earlier, the parcel owner and the license surveyor are in active communication during the verification process. As such, once the parcel owner has done his or her bet, the license surveyor will be notified and he or she will then navigate to the application status page and refresh it. Upon doing so, the license surveyor will see that the OTP status has indeed been verified by the parcel owner and also that the pending invoice has been paid. So once the payment has been made and the parcel owner has verified the application process, the submit request button on the top right hand corner is activated and you the license surveyor will now be able to submit the application. When you click on the submit request button, a pop-up notification will appear requiring you as the applicant to affirm that you want to submit the request. Click on yes and another pop-up notification will appear affirming that the application has been submitted successfully and then go ahead and click on close. Upon doing so, you'll notice that the status of the application will shift from pending to ongoing, meaning that your role as a license surveyor is accomplished and it's now up to the ministry officials involved in the process to do their part. You'll find the application in the first tab of the dashboard and when you click on view, you'll notice that the progress level of your application has advanced from the initial 17% to 25 percent. A key thing to note is that you can view the progress level of your application on the progress bar as is featured on the upper section of your screen upon submission of your application. Once your application has been fully approved by the ministry, you'll get a notification on your phone as a license surveyor that the subdivision application that you initiated has been fully approved and you can now find the new survey plan through the sale of plans which is a separate application process on the RDSASA platform. So if the proprietor or you, the license surveyor, needs to view the new plan, either of you can log into your respective accounts and navigate to the survey and mapping services section on the main landing page of the RDSASA platform, where you'll find the sale of plans listed as one of the services. Click on the sale of plans option, provide the parcel numbers that you'd want to purchase the plan for, and the plan will be available for purchase and download you'll be able to purchase both the coordinate list and the PDF plan from the system. That's it for this tutorial on how to do a subdivision application on RDSASA. Feel free to give feedback on this tutorial in the comment section below. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell button alongside the subscribe button to get notifications on new videos as and when we post them. Thanks for watching and goodbye.